my name is parv bansal uh born and raised in india i moved to france almost a year back more than a year back uh, to pursue my mba from uh, em law business school uh before coming here in france i worked for almost 10 years uh as a business strategy business development account management professionals uh i've had extensive experience in digital payments and travel e-commerce and international trade uh and i think over a period of time working in those 10 years uh in fact i might just want to point out uh, this is actually my second mba for which i came here so it was after the first mba and then i worked for 10 years and it was during the 10 years i sort of realized the fact that i really need to now have much global perspective and i think uh things like covid or uh, you know uh, starts coming in sort of gave us gave give me that uh trigger to sort of just move out of the country and then you know pursue my mba at emian business school the reason for me to pursue second mba uh i mean the, i i can talk about multiple factors uh in the last 10 years if you just look at how the business economy has moved i think we have grown enormously across globally right our uh, businesses are not restricted by boundaries now <clears throat> sorry uh they're more digital and covid sort of just increased the pace at which the digital ad- adoption happened uh that was one trigger point for me uh, i've also worked in international markets i was looking after apac so that sort of also pushed me to have a perspective of how things operate uh in the international world when you bring all of that together i think that sort of motivated me to be more global in my approach uh there's no business which now restricts itself in terms of one country or one region there are no business models as such which are now specific to one country uh every country now understands they have to expand uh in different verticals in different geographies so that sort of was my turning point was my major push to come to france be in an international environment and then pursue uh my mba here uh post my mba i plan to stay here uh considering that the business models which let's say we have back home uh, are very different than what happens in europe but we can see the trajectory where we are pretty much following the same pattern right for example i mean if i talk about india we are very price sensitive market versus europe which is a very loyalty based driven market right so and then we can see those trends coming in where businesses now in india talk about profitability and not just cash flow so bringing all of that together i think it's a good point for me uh i felt it's a good point for me to just take a step back go back to academia understand what's happening in the market be in an international community and then scale my myself professionally in my opinion because the first mba which i did i finished that off in 2012 and then started my second mba in 22 so almost a decade i think a lot has changed in the mba world uh, we were we were studying uh, i remember marketing 3.0 by philip kotler and now we study 5.0 we were talking about 5p's now we talk about iot I think a lot has changed not just let's say in terms of theory but in also in terms of the approach how an MBA program is delivered uh back in 2010 or 12 a lot of it was dependent on theory or there was less practical exposure or uh, there were limited business cases which we could discuss uh again as students we had limited information available there was internet but probably the information wasn't that much available but now I think for me this was a complete transformation in terms of the kind of access i had to knowledge databases the kind of business models we were discussing and and the pace of the business models uh, i would say at which we sort of now discuss and we tend to grow i think m- multiple aspects in terms of program delivery in terms of how we are looking at the problem statement uh in terms how we want to structure our businesses uh one example which i can talk about is uh, in 2010 when i was studying kotler uh, which is supposedly is called bible for marketing uh the kotler was focused only on southeast asia market but now when we look at kotler the Kot- the, the entire book talks about entire world uh why because business professionals and the uh, professors have also understood the fact that the businesses are now not restricted by boundaries uh with digital economy coming in we don't really have any boundaries and it's good to have uh cross cultural or let's say cross uh, geographical uh, learnings and bringing them together so that the students are more ready uh in whichever field they go and whichever country they are working in i think one of the key learnings which i had in this mba which i uh, sort of just i would not say contradicted but yeah sort of uh, did not really fit well or uh, in the previous mba i think in the previous mba we were we, we were globally at a stage where businesses were focusing a lot on growth uh this is 2010 2012 uh where the startup ecosystem was booming globally and you know there there was 
VC money coming in and everyone was focusing on growth, not really uh, focusing on profitability or let's say not even, they would try to keep customer in the center, but most of it was around growth, right? And is where I would say discounting, uh, building a customer base, which is price sensitive sort of came into picture. But now when we look at things here, and especially in this MBA, I think uh, that has completely gone out of the window. Businesses, or let's say this, even this entire MBA program talks about two things. One is building customer loyalty. And second, also ensuring that you're able to deliver value to the customer more sustainably, right? Uh, sustainability is sort of a big agenda of uh, AMD or MBA program. Uh, and considering the fact that back in 2010-12, uh, sustainability was not that big. Yes, it was being spoken, but was never made part of uh, academia that, uh, you know, they were never focusing on it. Uh, I think in this entire one year, we learned a lot about sustainability. Uh, we did have a trip to Berlin where we got an opportunity to meet startups who operate in uh, sustainability. Uh, uh, we got an opportunity to meet startups who are operating in sustainability functions. And not so, it was uh, it was an eye-opener for a lot of us uh, because we come from different cultural backgrounds, different countries. Some countries don't talk about it, some countries do talk about it. But it was good to see that whatever we've been discussing in the classroom, there are people who are actually working towards it. We, we talked about, for, for example, during in the classroom, we would talk about sustainable marketing or sustainable accounting. Now, these always came across as concepts and theories, but then meeting these founders, meeting these startup founders, understanding how they're doing it. I think that also gave us a perspective of what the future should look like. Or let's say even if I want to work in a certain direction, in a certain function, I need to keep customer and sustainability at the core so that I'm able to build a better, better future. And not just a future which is driven only by growth, but is more sustainable and profitable. The program uh, has impacted me in multiple ways. Uh, I mean, just let's say not just professionally, but even in terms of my personality. When it, com when it comes to my professional side, uh, whatever, let's say, what I had been doing for last 10 years, of course, there were certain things, let's say, like design thinking, uh, which we were already implementing in the business, but we did not really understand the fundamentals of it, right? But when you go back to the classroom, you're able to understand how this entire journey goes. At the same time, because you're so occupied in achieving numbers in, you know, in your daily targets, you, taught of, you, you sort of uh, forget to zoom out and look at the big, bigger picture. I think that's where uh, this MBA program helped me to sort of zoom out whenever you're building a strategy, figure out what is working well in some other industries and can that be replicated in my industry. And at the same time, because you're with a community of almost like 19 nationalities, we, had, we were a group of 39 with approximately 19 nationalities. There's so much exchange and there's so much group work which happens. So you're able to pick out what's possibly working in, let's say, in Africa or what's working in US and might probably be working well in India, right? So there's a lot of exchange which happens. There's a lot of cultural exchange. There's a lot of uh, business model exchange, geographical exchange. So that sort of helps you get a much wider perspective. In terms of my own, persona in terms of my own personality, I think uh, I'm a lot I'm a lot better at expressing myself now. Uh, I, I know that uh, all of us come from different cultural backgrounds, from different professional backgrounds, uh, but giving yourself that opportunity to just be in that uncomfortable position, networking, interacting with people, meeting new people, you know, building, building connections. I think initially it took a lot of effort for sure. Uh, but yeah, sort of, I would say, mastered that now. And that's, that's a big personality change, which I see myself uh, after this entire MBA program. When it comes to professional settings, I am an extrovert, but I know for a matter of fact, I'm an introvert. Uh, I have always shied away in terms of networking with people, uh, but moving here, spending time with people from different cultures, I came with that mindset that I really need to push myself and get in that mode of networking and interacting with people, right? So that's something which I ensured that I work on and successfully I've been able to achieve that. Uh, I'm glad that I now have a network of good people, not just let's say in France, but be it in Netherlands or be it in Germany. And then the more you network, I think you're able to understand different industries or uh, different professions much better. You get a much different uh, perspective. And the entire networking uh, aspect of it is also dependent on the fact that if you're not moving out of your own cocoon, then you might just be taking a step back in your overall growth, right? Uh, we have in organizations like Internations, which are so uh, aggressive uh, in, let's say, in Lyon, where we stay, and there are weekly meetups which happen. And 
we are pretty much the same set of people who come right some of us uh, don't know how to network some of us are introverts but it's only these platforms which sort of then boost you and make you that come give you that comfortable space to not just be an introvert but become an extrovert and then this is how i think uh, it just helps you to uh, grow professionally as well i think that working sort of is critical or let's say core for any MBA, for any mba program uh and uh considering that i would say personally i was the introvert one uh i always sort of shied away from going to a networking event but i clearly remember one of the networking event which i attended in india uh and yes i did have initial jitters because you don't really have too much content and you are in a setting where you have people coming from different professional backgrounds who are already probably working and you are going there as a student of course with your own objective of trying to make connections and then ultimately find a job uh but then yes i think initially yes there were there, there were some jitters but once you start mingling and you, once you start talking i think the community sort of understands that it's going to be a mix of people coming from different uh backgrounds people coming with different expectations and different purposes so that sort of helped me in uh you know removing that barrier and the kind of network i was able to build at that time i think it also led me to work on multiple projects to get ideas for my projects uh i clearly remember i came across one person who works in travel industry and uh, while we were working on a course uh, during the mba i got stuck at one of the problem statement and uh, i just happened to reach out to him asking uh, if he would have some insights about it and that sort of just flipped our entire project right so you never know uh how someone can be of your help and uh, how your network sort of just helps you to uh, you know move forward uh, professionally i think the course structure is uh, pretty diverse and goes pretty intense uh, and then i can speak for myself because i was particularly interested in uh, strategy uh, we had a, we had multiple courses on strategy there was international strategy business strategy but so yeah i think that was something which i was really excited to learn about uh having said that uh we also got the opportunity to work on life projects and we were then able to implement those business strategies in real life cases for example uh we we worked on a life case for accor hotels uh trying to build a more sustainable uh business model for them in terms of revenue extensions uh we also got in the similar in the same course we got an opportunity to work with euronews where we were looking for more additional revenue streams for euronews as a channel and then all of that sort of then culminates into an elp project uh, which is a 6 month live consulting project which we worked with uh, companies and these are live consulting case i got an opportunity to work with carreblanc uh, which is a leading home and bath linen brand in france and then we were working on their go to business uh, go to market strategy how they want to enter in multiple countries in europe so that sort of just gives you a wholesome perspective of what you've been taught in the class and not just let's say just strategy but you're also working on financials you're working on marketing so that sort of just brings everything together uh but then uh let's say if this is this was from my side and there are others who possibly were more interested in finance or there were some who were more interested in hr or ops i think we had a fair mix of subjects and electives which sort of covered most of the aspects of what a business professional would expect coming to emlio after one mba and then almost working for 10 years uh, of course uh, coming back to school it's a challenge you're not really used to sitting in one seat for like 6 7 hours studying and you know spending time but uh, one thing which sort of i i ensured i come up with is an open mind to learn i think that's that's really important uh and also come with the mindset that there might be a lot of things which i might have to unlearn uh for sure uh i would say some of the basic courses which we have which so that everyone sort of comes at the same level because not everyone comes from a business background a lot of students are coming from engineering background uh some of them were probably in uh, you know in construction some of them were coders uh so people people don't really come from the same background and for the class to have at least the same base point we do level up courses and then the first classes or let's say the first semester is when you get very generic uh, information or let's say generic courses now for sure i mean i i'll not say that uh, you know they were not useful for sure they were useful or uh, it's always good to reiterate or go back to the basics uh, but yes i think uh, it was it was also during that time it was in, uh, the mindset which i had was to keep and to ensure i keep myself open to learning 
uh, not restrict myself that you know I already know this why why am I still in the class because that's also an opportunity for you to share your experience with your peers uh that is where the cross learning happens once you start opening up once you start sharing your experiences is when you can expect your peers to share their learnings with you right so it's it's a two way communication so that was important um secondly in terms of let's say just the structure of the class uh, we were somewhere around about 39 people from 19 different nationalities uh i i'm like uh, somewhere around about 36 or uh, pretty old with two years of mba two mbas and uh, 10 years of work experience uh yes uh, sometimes it becomes challenging for you because the let's say the average age of the cohort would be slightly less than uh, your your own age uh but at the end because everyone has come with the same objective of uh, learning of sharing of uh, you know having a great experience i think that sort of uh, puts things in perspective um uh, we did have people who were uh, so i i might have forgotten to mention that we did have uh, two other people who came with a previous mba so we were three of us who had double mbas right which also speaks about the fact that how uh, business professionals understand the fact that they need to move uh, internationally they need to be part of an international community and not just restrict themselves to their own specific country So, for example, two of us were from India. Uh, the other one was from Colombia, and all three of us had the same objective that we are not. We we were doing pretty well professionally, uh, but we really wanted to challenge ourselves and come here to France, be in an international surrounding because that's how we see the world progressing. That we are not just focusing at a business which is operating in India, but now I want to talk about a business which operates in India, but that's also in Africa, in Europe, in US, in Japan. That's how businesses are, and that's how. the i would say the technology has sort of allowed us to put uh, you know people across so yeah this was how the uh, how the experience was uh, uh, a mix of both uh, i would say a lot of learning a lot of unlearning uh, and uh, been a pretty interesting ride my advice to students uh, whoever is coming to amlia or let's say whoever plans to go for an mba i think come with an open mind uh, that's really important uh you might be an expert in your field you might have 5 years experience or 10 years of experience but keep that mindset out of the window uh come to school as if it's day 0 for you there's going to be a lot of learning and there's going to be a lot of unlearning happening that is one second if you're an introvert try and push yourself and become an extrovert because this is one of those rarest opportunities where you get to interact with people from different cultures people with different professional backgrounds and the ones who are extrovert i think they were they should be the ones who sort of take that lead in pulling those introverts out of their uh, cocoon uh third point which i would mention is it can it cannot be just one way uh, discussion right it cannot be that you're just listening from uh, everyone but you should also be a giver so feel free to express your opinion you might think that your idea or let's say the comment which you're about to make is stupid but you never know right because no one no one has really heard your thought so take that opportunity of being more expressive uh, of putting yourself in those uncomfortable positions because this is this one year sort of can be a game changer for you in terms of how you look at business how your personality is and last but not the least enjoy this one year uh, to the fullest it's a good it's a good uh, going to be a good experience for you uh make you'll make friends for a lifetime from all across the world wherever you're traveling at least you will have a home and you can always call up hey i'm in your country uh yeah i think uh, make the best out of uh, this entire year not just personally but professionally as well